Messages in focus, or MIFs, are a set of key investment views that lead to investment ideas, all the while providing value to your portfolio. But as these are designed with markets in mind, CIO has recently updated the list just a bit. Today, we'll review the newest MIFs and what they mean for your portfolio right here on UBS Trending. Hi, everyone, and welcome to UBS Trending. I'm your host, Anthony Pastore. Thank you for joining us. Jason Dreho from the Chief Investment Office is here with me to talk about what's new with the messages in focus. So let's get right down into what's important right now. Jason, I think that really is the question of what are messages in focus besides that quick little intro I gave just a moment ago. All right, so the, the message in focus, or MIFs for short, you know, somewhere are a distillation of you know, the CIO host view uh, now, if you think of the host view as an overarching view of the economy, of policy, of financial markets, that ultimately kind of culminates in investment recommendation, that's kind of the host view. The, the myths are a way to kind of get down to the kind of the core essential investment recommendations from the host view. Now, in a practical way, I kind of think of the myths as helping advisors, helping our clients kind of sift through a lot of noise that exists or certainly a lot of details of the host view a lot of noise that can also exist in overall communication channels and the financial markets to get kind of the essence of like, what is CIO really saying in their house view? Uh, and I think this can be helpful for, for our client clients to understand really what they should be doing in portfolios. So if they follow these messages in focus, if they take sort of the investment recommendations associated with them, they implement them in the portfolios, then they're really kind of closely aligned with what we're recommending overall in the house view. Terrific. You know, Jason, you use the word noise, and I bet for a lot of investors out there, that's what the markets and all the market news coming out feels like these days. So these messages in focus, as you said, are really designed to hone in on the themes, on the house view. So that being said, these are looked at on the regular by you and everyone else in the chief investment office to make sure that they're still aligned to what's going on in the market. So that being said, what are maybe some of the new messages in focus that you've looked at for this month? Yeah, you're right. So every month as part of our house view process, we will review our messages, determine whether it's necessary to make kind of any changes to them. You add in some, you know, making some tweaks. So this past month, there was really relatively modest changes to our house view. Uh, and as, as a result, relatively modest changes to our messages and focus. In fact, except for some minor tweaks, they didn't really change. Uh, and the rationale for that really boils down to the fact that over the past month, if you look at sort of financial markets, whether it's the S&P 500, Treasury yields, they were relatively kind of tightly range bound. They didn't move a lot. Uh, and the overall sort of macro thesis we have for the economy, for policy, for markets, and for risks didn't change much either. So as a result, we didn't really think it was necessary to make you know, any sort of significant changes to the, the messages. Uh, I think from a tactical perspective, the three kind of key ones that you know, I really kind of emphasize are to manage liquidity as rates peak, uh, you know, to buy quality bonds and income, the third one is to diversify beyond the U.S. and growth. Jason, let's dig in a little bit deeper on, on maybe two of those. I, I, I particularly, um, with buy quality bonds, that's a message and focus that we've been talking about, but you did add the words and income to the tail end of that, so it's adjusted slightly. And also, as you said, you've added this managed liquidity message and focus as rates are peaking. Give us a little bit more of a deeper dive into those two. So they're, they're kind of jointly related because it's all about you know, how to think about your fixed income portfolio primarily. And I'll touch on the income piece that we've added to that last message. But the overall view is that you know, the Fed is likely done hiking rates. There's certainly a chance that they could hike again in June or maybe even in July. But even if it's only one more hike, essentially rates have, have peaked in this cycle. And the direction of travel at some point in time, at least thinks through the year end, is rates are going to go lower. That's true for for long run rates, but also ultimately short run rates when the Fed does start cutting policy rates, probably not until next year, which means that when you think about your liquidity strategy of your short term allocation to like very short maturity bonds, be aware that you know the 5% plus that you're getting right now may not exist a year from now. So you want to be able to manage that portfolio to avoid kind of you know, surprises to reinvestment risk, make sure you have sort of diversification in how you do that. This I think kind of pairs well with the diversify uh, or to buy quality bonds because the idea in general in a portfolio is to kind of go up in quality. Uh, and up in quality in bonds means higher quality investment grade corporate bonds, you know, mortgage-backed securities that are kind of essentially have a government guarantee. These help to give diversification to portfolio, but they also have sort of longer maturities and longer duration, which matters because if interest rates decline, if rates have peaked and they go lower, 
that's going to help give better diversification to you know, the fixed income portfolio and help sort of diversify the equity risk. So in some way, the two of them together are almost like kind of barbelling your fixed income portfolio, managing ultra short liquidity, but also buying kind of longer quality. Uh, the other message in terms of diversifying you know, beyond the U.S. and growth, I think part of that story is really you know, kind of countering to what's happened a lot in the markets this year. The biggest outperformers by far in the U.S. equity markets are large cap growth stocks that have done very well. Now, as a result, the tech sector is pretty expensive. You know, it's always kind of trades at a bit of a premium to U.S. markets overall, but it's incredibly expensive right now, whether you look at, you know, it's price to earnings or price to book. Ultimately, we think that's going to sort of reverse. Um, and to, because of that, look for other opportunities within the U.S. markets, both value stocks, little more defensive sectors, but also looking outside the U.S., uh, and particularly emerging markets an area that we like to kind of help diversify your portfolio. Great, Jason, thank you. Uh, and what I want to say to, to our viewers is this, and you know, these are messages and focus are, are terms that we use here a lot and our advisors are, are starting to really utilize them in their conversations. But what's great about us th having this conversation now and talking to our audience, our investors out there, is that you at least understand where our advisors are coming from when they're talking about some of these key messages as Jason was talking about, buying liquidity, buying quality bonds, or managing liquidity, buying quality bonds, diversifying outside the U.S. And what's great about that is they have the implementation ideas behind it. So maybe there's a product or, or something that goes into your portfolio that aligns perfectly with these messages, which again are because of the themes within the CIO house view that are uh, available to all of the financial advisors at UBS. So it becomes this sort of one giant ecosystem of information and messaging that's easy when you're having a conversation with your your advisor. So let's let's take that to I think probably the most important question we have here Jason is besides what we just talked about why are these messages in focus so important what's the value for investors here? Well I think it's you know thinking about the macro environment what are the key things you want to do to your portfolio to get through this period of, of elevated uncertainty? You know, the examples that we've discussed, these messages that we've touched on, I think are kind of the, the key parts of that thesis. Uh, and then as you, you know, alluded to, Anthony, it isn't just, you know, the message to buy quality bonds, but like, okay, well, then what's the action you take? What do you should you be buying? We do, and our colleagues in other parts of the, you know, the Chief Investment Office and Investment Solutions will give those recommendations of those particular solutions. So it really is sort of a whole, you know, message and focus value chain from thinking about big picture, what is the house view? What are the kind of actual investment ideas that CIO is recommending? That's the messages. And then here are the specific implementation solutions that are being recommended by our investment management colleagues. Terrific. Jason, thank you very much. And again, for as far as these messages and focus are concerned for our audience today, when you're talking to your financial advisors, they may come up in conversation. It's just a great way for you to kind of see where they're coming from and where these messages or these themes actually exist and why they're there in the first place. Again, managed on a daily basis by members of the chief investment office like Jason and many of the other colleagues you see sitting here at the table with us for lots of conversations. For more information, check out the website. It's UBS.com forward slash MIF, M-I-F. Again, that stands for Messages in Focus. So you can take a look there. It gives you all of the messages in focus that are available today. And as they change over time, you'll see them updated there as well. And it's great for when you're going in with a conversation with your FA. And also, just make sure to follow UBS on social media, particularly our newly launched or relaunched, I should say, UBS trending Instagram channel. There's lots of great content up there for you, plus some never before seen footage of great conversations we didn't get time to show on these UBS trending episodes. So check that out as well. And remember, make sure if you have any questions about anything we spoke about today or anything else we speak about on this series, contact your financial advisor. Until next time, I'm Anthony Pastore. We hope you have a great day, everybody. And remember to keep your eyes on what's trending. We'll see you soon.